Hi, this is Jennifer Coolidge. The American Heart Association says the disco song Stayin' Alive is the near-perfect beat for hands-only CPR. If you see a teen or adult collapse from cardiac arrest, you only need two steps to help save a life. Call 911 and push hard and fast in the center of the chest to the beat of the song Stayin' Alive. Disco is back and it's saving lives. To learn more, go to heart.org slash hands-only CPR. Nationally supported by the WellPoint Foundation. Welcome to the Storytellers Campfire Radio Shows, where we share knowledge, experiences, and pass stories from one generation to the next at our global campfire. We have a nice warm campfire going in the background to warm us up a bit, and we hope you enjoy the show. Storytelling is the conveying of events in words, images, and sounds, often by improvisation or embellishment. Stories or narratives have been shared in every culture as a means of entertainment, education, cultural preservation, and in order to instill moral values. The earliest forms of storytelling were primarily oral, combined with gestures and expressions. In addition to being part of religious ritual, rudimentary drawings scratched onto the walls of caves may be forms of early storytelling for many of the ancient cultures. The Australian Aboriginal people painted symbols from stories on cave walls as a means of helping the storyteller remember the story. The story was then told using a combination of oral narrative, music, rock art, and dance. Ephemeral media such as sand, leaves, and the carved trunks of living trees have also been used to record stories in pictures or with writing. With the advent of writing, Stories have been carved, scratched, painted, printed, or inked onto wood or bamboo, ivory and other bones, pottery, clay tablets, stone, palm leaf book, skin, parchment, bark, cloth, paper, silk, canvas, and other textiles. Traditionally, oral stories were committed to memory and then passed from generation to generation. However, in the most recent past, Written and televised media has largely surpassed this method, communicating local family and cultural histories. On Storyteller's Campfire, we are bringing the ancient, traditional, and modern forms of storytelling to life. Our mission is to encourage more reading and for people to experience more through literature. Good evening. Welcome to Storyteller's Campfire. This is Lady Sela Sujuris. I'm the program director and part-time host for our shows. Tonight, for our feature presentation, we're going to take a little step back in time to the 1939 New York World's Fair photo collection. This book is authored by Paul M. Van Dort. But before we get to our feature presentation, I just wanted to say a little bit about Storytellers Campfire. We're currently heard in over a hundred countries around the world. Our program is broadcast throughout the U.S. and on international broadcasting stations. We can be heard through digital 
satellite, HD, and shortwave radio. Our program is also heard on Airtime America, iHeartRadio, iTunes, and our podcast archive shows can be heard through Spreaker.com and Blog Talk Radio. We also provide links through social media such as Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn, YouTube, Tumblr, and SoundCloud. To learn more about Storytellers Campfire or the guests that we feature on the program, just visit online at storytellerscampfire.org. And now we'll take a short commercial break and we'll be right back for our feature presentation. Whoa, a new digital music player. Thanks, Mom. Oh, I'm glad you like it, because I can't wait to toss the big stereo. And now that we got your dad that big HD TV he wanted, we can throw out our old TV, too. Hold up. You can't just throw out electronics. Really? They need to be recycled or donated. And how would we do that? (laughs) It's so easy, Mom. Today, recycling electronics is just as easy as buying them. GreenerGadgets.org has all the info. We just enter our zip code to find a certified recycling center nearby. There are thousands of them, and new ones are being added all the time. Some of our local stores are even certified recycling locations. I like that. Did you know that some of the stuff in our old electronics could be used to make new products and conserve natural resources? Well, okay then. Let's gather them up. Um, what was that website again? GreenerGadgets.org. We just enter our zip code and go. Welcome back to Storytellers Campfire in Progress. This is Lady Sela Sujuris hosting for our book review program. And tonight we are featuring the 1939 New York World's Fair photo collection book authored by Paul M. Van Dort. Now Paul has had his own share of personal experiences of American history. And he's a man after our own hearts here at Storytellers Campfire who shares a passion in preserving that history. The book that we are featuring literally makes you step back into time. It is an incredible private collection of over 271 photographs that invoke the sight and the sounds of the 1939 New York World's Fair. Now the images are in black and white, but it truly does bring life to this historical event that took place. Now for those who actually attended the event, um, it's a wonderful trip down memory lane, but for all of those who were not at the event, it really takes us back into the past and the pageantry of the slice of New York's history. I'd like to share just a couple of uh, quotes that are actually on the back of the book for some of the people who um, had read it and, and made a tribute to Paul's work. This comes from D. Manella of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The book made me feel like I actually experienced
experienced being at the 39 Fair. It's a great tribute to one of mankind's greatest shows and it helps to create a permanent memory for those who went to it and for those who can only fantasize about it. Thank you. And then this came from S. Chan of New York City. The book toured me through a marvelous journey through the fair. I can sense the magic. This is an invaluable reference on the topic and indispensable reading for any of the World's Fair's enthusiasts. These are wonderful reviews and there are plenty more reviews. Um, anyone can just simply uh, go on to Google and look at the reviews and the comments that were made on Paul's book. I want to offer to our listeners to share the preface of the book and I think it just sums up and tells the story of how Paul came to the idea and inspiration of, of preserving this history in this book. So we're going to take a step back in time. Imagine, if you will, it's 1951 and World War II had been over for about six years. Shell gasoline was 23 cents per gallon, cigarettes were 25 cents a pack, and minimum wage was 90 cents an hour. The 1939-1940 New York World's Fair had been over for a little more than a decade, and the next one, the anticipated, would be in New York. Paul writes, My bedroom was in the finished part of the attic in our northern New Jersey Cape Cod house. If you are familiar with this style of home, you know the attic stairs usually goes up near the center of the house. My room had three built-in bookcases filled with books like authors from Mark Twain, Charles Dickens, Edgar Allan Poe, not to mention the many others. Most of these were read once and then were retired to the attic to be dealt with sometime in the future. The bookcase located over the stairs was about three feet deep. Behind the shadow of the books was where memories were stored. A collection of war medals, theater playbills, the family photo albums, old books like Scott Ladies of the Lake, and a leather-bound edition of A Christmas Carol. But the best of all were two albums of photos of the 1939 World's Fair. That was my room for 12 years until I turned 17, graduated from high school, and moved out. During those years, from time to time, I would dig out the World's Fair photo albums and spend hours looking at them. After leaving home, I forgot about the fair pictures for more than 35 years. The albums and some of the books moved with my parents, first to Florida in 1976 and then to Nevada in 1990. Mom passed away in 1993 and Dad moved into a smaller apartment. The books and albums, all neatly boxed, were moved into my garage for storage. After the death of my father in the spring of 2000, I had to go through all the boxes and decide what to do with the contents. In doing so, I came across the two albums of 1939 New York World's Fair. Once again, 